Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo. Today we are digging into my 240SX. This is supposed to be a fun little drift car that has spiraled out of control like most of our projects do. Uh, if you don't know, I've done a lot of hot rod TV and YouTube the last seven or eight years or so. But before that, I was an American pro drift racer and I've been kind of bit by the, the drift bug. Again, I wanna get out there, I wanna have some fun. Uh, and you know, today, most real serious drift cars are big V6s or V8s with nitrous plus turbos. But when I was racing, I was always dumb enough to have a four cylinder or a rotary turbo constantly outgunned. And I decided when I was gonna build a fun practice car, let's just stick with that theme. So this is a 1989 Nissan 240SX little Japanese four cylinder turbo motor that is pretty stout. Uh, and we're gonna turn it into something that actually runs and dries. It has not moved under its own power basically ever. It's kind of a conglomeration of little projects. We're gonna get rocking. This thing will do some burnouts by the end of this episode, I promise. Click the link to check out the Stay Tuned merch store. We've got shirts, hats, and fresh new Stay Tuned crew necks. It's getting cold and it's also gift giving season. The holidays are coming up. Which is a perfect way to say, I love you, and I know what you think is cool. Hot rods, buy a shirt. Or like, buy yourself, let's buy yourself a shirt. So after not really drifting, besides a few times here and there over like the last five years, I wanna get back on, on track. I wanna thrash around with my buddies. I don't wanna be able to push the limits and maybe even bring some of the other hot rod dudes you guys know out here, throw them in a properly prepped drift car and see what they can do. You know, I'd love to see Derek in here from Vice Grip trying to wheel this thing around track. That dude can actually really drive. I think it'd be super fun. But regardless, I need something I can jump into and take to the local English Town Raceway Park events and just thrash when I need to. So this is the plan for this thing. And I kind of bought it in a couple different pieces. The main number one essential element of this car is this uh, SR20 DET. It's a four cylinder inline turbo, rear wheel drive transmission setup. This did not come in this car in America, but it did come in this car in Japan. It makes about 205 horsepower stock. We've got it boosted up now to about 360 or so. Uh, Jimmy Oaks came out last time, tuned this thing up. It's stock cams. It's just got a bigger turbo on it uh, and a link ECU and bigger injectors. And he made 320 wheel horsepower or so. So it's a ripper, but we couldn't enjoy it at all because there's no brakes, there's no suspension, the car doesn't turn, and there's all sorts of problems. Uh, and we're gonna fix that, okay? But know that in here, there's some pretty serious power. So I bought this engine and transmission in a thousand dollar car that was my buddy Ryan's from years ago. It had been sitting, not running with the swap in it from like 2006. It was a smoking deal at a grand, uh, but the chassis was super rusty. And to get, try to get this project moving forward a little bit, I bought this super clean shell. Um, this is fully caged, wide body, um, not a ton of suspension on it, just enough to kind of like push it around. It was definitely someone's project they didn't finish, but it was a great way to get into a car that already had a cage, is already like, you know, stripped down, rust free, and ready to build. We tossed that engine into this thing, junked the other 240SX, well, I think I sold it, and uh, we're ready to rock. So we've got all this horsepower now, it's time to figure out some suspension and brakes, and make sure I can drive this thing. And that's our first issue here. I'm not the tallest dude around, and let me show you why. Even for me, this is a problem. So, I am sitting up right here with my head through the sunroof at a screaming five foot eight and a half inches. This is not gonna work. I can't, my eyes above, above the door, the, like the, the pillar here. I can't, it's not gonna work. Uh, these cars are notorious for being designed just for the Japanese guys on that side. And there's a big issue because uh, when you design a car and you stick a cat hump down here where the American drivers sit, it raises the seat like four and a half inches. So this doesn't work for me, right? And it's, if I'm gonna bring like Derek or Finn or somebody, some of my buddies that are a little bit taller in, it's definitely not gonna work for them. When we had Jimmy Oaks, who's a tall dude, tune in this thing. I swear he was sitting like, his head was out, out here, out of the windshield. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. But there's some pretty cool ways to get around that. We're gonna get rid of that cat hump. We're gonna lower the seat down because driving position is hugely important when you're going through turns or any kind of serious racing. And this is just not it. This is not safe to put your head out the sunroof. All right. It's worse than I remember. It's ridiculous. 
Yeah. Not as tall as you. I don't know. Yeah. I sit up pretty tall, but yeah, it's not great. Get that out of here. Tyler's here today. We're hanging out tonight, getting rocking on this project. Uh, feels good though. The rest of it is nice. solid. Yeah. They're awesome cars. We feel better with this out. Yeah. All right, let's yank that seat. Oh. This comes off. That'll do it. All right, so I have this trick little piece to lower the seat. This is a cat hump delete from uh, some of my buddies at Alaria Tech. It's the guys from MA Motorsports who are like top, top tier drift car builders and have been for many years. I've worked with those guys and partied with those dudes for a long time. Awesome guys. Uh, they make this kit and if you are not a serious sheet metal fabricator, I would suggest just grabbing one. These are a little bit under 200 bucks. It's gonna fit in there perfectly. It's, you know, got both planes all sorted out with the radius you need. Just cut that out, toss this thing in there and weld it up. It's that easy. It's not that easy, but we're gonna try to make it look that easy. We'll figure it out. Let's get started. So this is all just spot welded in. I'm gonna get a little spot welding brooch bit and just start knocking those out. And we'll start to pull this rail off. So let's do it. All right, so I have a spot weld cutter here. A couple different types of these. One is like a spring loaded one with a cutting thing around it. This is just a flat cutter. It's gonna center itself in the weld and then just grind straight through the thing. I like these a little bit better because uh, they do cut a little bit more if it's like a big wide wonky one. So I'm just gonna get in here. This is all spot welded together. Try to aim for the center, knock them out. I'm kind of pry it and just wiggle and see where it is. If you can't find a spot weld and stuff's really stuck, you can wail on it with a hammer a little bit and it'll sort of reveal itself, but it's, it's just a bit of trial and error here. Just to see the little dimples from the where the welds are. There's a good one. And we'll just cut it through. That's one. That's it. We'll move this one next. There you go. Beauty. So you can see, you don't go too far. You leave quite a bit of metal there intact, which is nice. You won't have to repair anything. Oh, old cutters are awesome. I might grind one or two that have a little lip on them, but generally it worked awesome. So this is the Alaria piece. You can see it's gonna lower the floor like a solid three inches. It's significant. Um, so we have to cut this hump out fit this sucker in there and weld it all together. Um, but we have a transmission that is bolted in here and you're gonna cut right around the transmission mounts. So we're gonna put it up first, start the cut there and figure it out on the top side. So we're gonna toss the car up on the lift. And... Where there should be a catalytic converter, we have this big, beautiful off-road test pipe. So we're gonna yank that off the down pipe, the test pipe, get it out of the way. And the cut is gonna be made up in here, right around the transmission mount. Uh, so that's why I want to be down here so I don't hack right through it or wind up blasting the saw blade to bits. I will take this heat shield off, packing it out of the way. If we have to, we'll take the transmit out and put it up with a pole jack and just cut everything we need to to get it back up in there. Shouldn't lose much strength. This is all boxed into the frame here. I think that'll be fine. And I'm going to come back and lay in a lower, much lower reinforcement for the front of my seat. Uh, on top of the cat hump that we're putting in. So it will strengthen all this stuff back up by tying this into the outer rail. <laughs> well, sort of. It's easy for Pennsylvania in the winter, but... I don't know if it's ever easy. This thing's like 18. 18 on one side, 17 on the other. Oh. Just to make me completely insane. <laughs> I see him once in a while. there so it'll be back this is the last ridge it sits just behind this that's why we're underneath here to make this first cut we're gonna 
mark this, cut right along here. Then we will go inside, I think, and make the rest of the cuts. Looks like once we're clear of this guy. But we won't cut this way at all. It's just a straight cut here. Cut along, cut the back, cut it out. Slap it in, weld it up. Knock, knock. It's pretty exciting if you're on the other side of that. We know our boundaries. We know where we are. Let's try it. All right, that's our first cut. That's our mark. We're gonna come in here, get a rough idea. Basically, we're gonna take this down to the flat. We're gonna trim. I'll keep it a little bit on the smaller side, down to the flat, not waste a bunch of time. Cut this out. This has a lot of space on the vertical, so I will ride this curve out a little bit and just see where we wind up. But uh, we got this cut out of here. This camel will have one less hump in it. There we go. Success. Hell yeah. All right, I'm gonna start to lay the piece in. Pretty solid. Gotta go forward a bit with it. I have to cut this lip out, I see that. Solid first fit though. That's really the main thing we're worried about. It's definitely got good coverage. And we'll start probably just flattening this corner. Get rid of this. Brace here and then start fitting that thing in. All right, uh, it's a new morning. Zach has been in already. He got fired up before I got here to start fitting this panel a little bit more. It's pretty close, as you can see. I think with kind of grind on this corner, it'll help slide this in. But you can, you know, this compound bend here is is the sort of the crux of all of it. We get that fitting right, then the rest we just push it down and hammer it out and make, and make it work. But we're gonna focus right on this point here, get that stuff dialed in first, and then work our way back. Should be pretty straightforward. If you give it a shove here, you see it does line up pretty nicely. I'm gonna take a little bit out of here so this will push in, but nothing too bad so far. That's that's not the end of the world. That's a pretty great fit. And if you're gonna make this yourself, it would take you forever. So this piece, I think it's a little under 200 bucks from Ilaria. It's on sale right now. It's worth it for sure. You wanna sit down low in your race car. We got an S chassis. This is the way to rock. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna start tacking this Alaria piece in. Like we said before, this compound curve is the biggest deal. We got our Millermatic 220 ready to rock. And if you're doing anything like this where you really want sheet metal to fit well, and it's kind of over a broad area like this, believe it or not, we're just gonna tack it in where it fits really great and then use a hammer to either push or smack to get the other stuff to close up. You're gonna hit it from underneath, hit it from on top, whatever you gotta do. And then when you're done, it's just gonna look like one nice piece of metal. Like, you know, fitment is big. Getting stuff to fit before you start rocking with the welder is huge. But there's a ton you can do with a hammer and a pry bar and everything to get it to fit up afterwards. Sheet metal is very easy to bend, and we're gonna make this look killer. And it's just going under my butt, so no one's ever gonna see it again anyway. Where do you wanna start? What fits the best? Like right there. Okay, so let's get this curve good. Yeah, I figure we can throw on here, and then we can pull that out. We don't want it. Well, so that generally, I would do here, I'll only do like do this and then we'll push this in because pulling out is gonna mean we gotta get under the car. Yeah. Hit it right there. Get that curve up there? Yeah, perfect. Hold on, my eyeballs. Hit it. A little harder. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Stop. Alright, we've got the Alaria cat hump delete now tacked into place from the top side. It looks awesome. There's like two different spots where the floor pan's a little bit low. I'm gonna have Zach get underneath and just push it up with a hammer and we will, once it's meet, met up nicely, I'll just hit it with some tacks. I hammered it down here. You can see if it's pretty great. 
not really worried about any of it. It fits really, really well for us just zipping through it. We're not, you know, sheet metal fabricators, so I'm very happy with this. You see this gap here? We decided to leave that so we had a nice way for the listing to lay down flat. And again, he's just going to go underneath and tap it forward. You know, instead of trying to fill that big gap, he'll get underneath, knock it forward, I'll tack it up, and then he's going to weld the whole thing. And we'll move on to the next piece. The next piece of the puzzle. Cool. While that panel is cooling down, lunch is heating up. We have sweet half pep pizza from Tornetta's out here in Pennsylvania. This is a shop that we drive all the way to Pottstown to get. Everything they make is incredible. We run on two things here. Coffee and delicious Pennsylvania pizza. Mm. Very nice, good. See the cup there? And the oven's hot enough. The pepperoni makes its own little bath of delicious juice. When you eat it, and you get strong. We are going to take this sweet clutch pedal reinforcement from GK Tech. It's another well-made piece of metal ready for welding. And weld it into our clutch pedal bracket because, Zach, wiggle, wiggle it left and right. Just grab that pedal and give her a wiggle. It's not a very strong piece. And once you do any serious clutch kicking, it just bends into like a pretzel. Right, you can see that thing just about touching the outside of the car if you do it right. So, they've got this little piece. It welds in. Just remove that and we'll get to it. My five-year-old twin daughters came to the shop to cause havoc and eat pizza and kind of helped me assemble this GK Tech fabric. Then it's gonna, gonna make the car hit the brakes real hard. All right, Zach has that GK Tech brace I'll weld it in to the factory clutch, so now we can just absolutely do the monster mash on top of that thing, and it shouldn't distort at all. It's great. Strong. Strong. It's good now. All right, let me show you all the cool stuff we've got going on here. We've got all the GK Tech arms for the front and rear suspension of this thing. But there's a few issues. We're missing some key components. I need stock spindles and knuckles to put these things on. I don't have them. Uh, and we have like a whole mismatch of brake setups. We're trying to figure it out. I just want to get this thing down the road. At some point, we'll get all of this super high level suspension stuff on here. But I think today, we're just going to come up with a system that lets the car stop and turn. And I bet as long as you get that going, it'll be a blast. So come on over here. This is what I bought with this car. Again, I bought like a half finished project and it's really kind of jamming me up here. I believe these are Q45 brakes. This car didn't come five lug, but the Q45 is a five lug brake with this brand new caliper. They've obviously been left in the wind and sun and rain and sleet for like, you know, a couple years just to rust up, which is a bummer. So I was gonna try to use a different set of calipers we have. We've been piecemealing this project together for years and it's sort of just like we have a little bit of this setup, a little bit of that setup. We're just gonna try to find something that works. So right now we're gonna just tear this corner apart. I do have new coilovers from BC. These are shot and disgusting. So that'll come off. Uh, we're just gonna tear this all the way down and get on as much stuff as we need to get this thing down the road. My bad, this is my wrong hand. Oh, man. Tyler is smashing down the inner fender seams so that we have more clearance for crazy steering angle here. So we pulled the old coilovers off that came on this rolling shell. It's just a mishmashed pair of old rusty things from who knows where. Got a new set of BC Racing DS uh, series coilovers. These are double height adjustable, 30 way damping, single adjustable. So it's mostly gonna affect rebound, but that's gonna have the biggest dynamic change on how the car drives. Uh, it's like a good solid starter coilover. Uh, lots of plating. I don't think they're going to corrode. I'm actually not going to put a bunch of anti-seize on them because they look all set up. We're just going to toss them in the car. And they look super cool too. Look at that. Nice, nice scheme you got. You got your gold, you got your black. It's like the Pittsburgh Penguins over here. If you're new to this game, this is like a camber plate here. We will adjust these from the inside circle once the upper mount is bolted in and you're aligning the car. You'll be able to get a ton of camber out of this thing. Usually run drift cars between one and like four degrees of negative camber depending on how you're setting it up and this will just slam right up in there 
And the way it works with the 240s is there's like a million different ways you can run these cards. You can run S14, the later, longer control arm. You can run a tubular control arm. Uh, these are standard ones, it looks like, and they are just braced up at the bottom. This is a GK Tech tension rod. It's kind of cut out and scalloped here for tons of angle. I want to run the GK Tech bolt-in angle kit, and I want to run their lower arm. We have them. We do not have a factory knuckle to support that because someone already hacked this up, cut and welded it. So just for now, we're going to do one thing at a time, which kind of, you know, pains me a little bit. But we're going to run the BC coilovers, these TC rods instead of ST sway bars, and everything else is just kind of the junk that came on the car. And we're going to replace these very bent up tie rods with some dormant stuff. Just that easy. And we've got, figure out our brake stuff, but let's get the suspension rocking for now. I think these hubs are not really on there. We're gonna give everything a once over. When you buy a car like this, it's been apart 50 times. Maybe ran, maybe didn't. You definitely wanna be prepared to get in there and make sure everything's tight. Give it a once over. to get this car down the road in a blaze of tire smoke and forgotten dreams we are going to just use some of the parts that are on the car because we didn't get everything we thought we had but i'm finding out there is some decent stuff on here this is a q45 infinity you know, it's like a big luxury car brake upgrade uh, this stuff looks pretty gross but in fact it's never been used you can see from the hardware and how well it slides so we're just gonna have zach give these a little scuff toss them back on the car See, since they're brand new, when they rusted, they rusted super evenly. So I'll just throw the new pads on and I'll clean them right up. Zach's going to paint them. And they're going to go right on the car. Ooh, they do slide good. That's what I was thinking. Finish up our brake system upgrade. We've got everything figured out. We've got dual calipers on the rear. We're gonna run the Q45 stuff in the front and we're going to set it all off with GK Tech uh, stainless braided lines literally everywhere. Uh, these are awesome. They have better feel, less flex. They're gonna last longer. These are actually even coated, which is super nice because early ones, if you were doing this stuff 20 years ago, they would turn like crusty and disgusting and they would rust. These are stainless. They're not gonna rust and they're sweet. And we have the setup for our favorite piece of a drift car ever, the GK Tech handbrake. So we're gonna get these on. And if it's a car like this has been sitting for who knows how many years, five years, the rubber stuff that's on there is gonna be disgusting and nasty. Put these on, we don't have to worry about it. We'll have a new master, new lines, you know, random new old calipers. It's gonna work great. Now, Spin it around a little bit. Now give it a little kiss. Perfect. That's how we do it. Oh my God. He's new. He's new here. It's not that kind of show, man. The family show. Late night. Stay tuned. <laughs> I did not see that. 
I guess I could go out and get Q45 rotors, but let's, I bet these will crawl up all right. They feel, they feel flat, they feel flat. It's oh. like 10 o'clock at night, so my brain's like, Q4 just get it, it stops, on there. This should be able to clean right up, right? It's fine, it's gonna be fine. Zach painted the brackets up. They look sick. Ooh. It goes well with that patina. Black and patina. It's a nice, nice contrast. All right, calipers looking fresh. Rotors looking decrepit. <laughs> GK Tech to bring them all together. Got their whole website right here on the thing. Smart for the internet, so it's on the World Wide Web. Get on a... Old, it has the dot com. <laughs> Strong. With what? Everything. There we go. I'm gonna not... Uh, Respond to that. Turns out there's a smaller hole in the back on the bottom. That's not it. That's like a so stay. You're not going to respond to me, but you're going to say that. <laughs> yep. There's the regular one. Right. So we basically have the foot brake system all done. The suspension is done for now. Uh, we got to put the seat back in it, put the handbrake in this thing, and then get ready to hit the road. Or the track, or the street, or the parking lot, maybe? I don't know. Something. Something fun. We're going to hit something. We're going to hit something. It's not going to be a deer, I hope. I mean, that bar is pretty nice. Boy, yeah, it would go right over this thing. Deer jump straight over that bad boy. All right, Zach spent a little bit of time making a seat mount here. Looks nice and stiff, secure. I'm going to climb in there and see how I fit. Remember, it's much lower now. I'm excited about it. It's my first time sitting in this thing for real. And he tossed on a set of fresh front tires and pads. Oh, you know what? That's pretty good. For you not being here, I think I did a good job. Yeah. Oh, that's school bus. There you go. I knew it. That's pretty good. That's pretty solid. Where your driving shoes today? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for anything. <laughs> All right. We got a steering wheel, shifter, pedals, but it's a drift car. I'm going to need this party boy. The handbrake's got to go in this thing. We got this cool GK Tech setup. It's actually specific to S chassis. It's going to bolt right into these four shifter boot holes and allow me to put this thing kind of exactly however I need it. So we're going to get that dialed in right here. I assembled this with my five-year-old so it took like 25 minutes and it's not done yet but i'm gonna get it i'll get it figured out you can run this with either uh what they call a divorced uh so two separate rear calipers or you can run it in line with your foot brake and run it to the single rear caliper this has, this car has two calipers on it it's a better system it's a little bit more fun uh, but you can do it either way just depends you gotta swap out your master cylinder all right you want to grab me some tools i'll just stay in here and do this so this is pull up this is like factory style and then this is like rally style, pull back. But I, I learned to do pull back because you're so much stronger this way. So this is like my. I feel like it's a weird. When I was a kid, like that's all I knew, you know, riding my big wheel, I used to yeah, pull yeah, this yeah. thing up. This is like what I learned on. And then they were like, oh no, pro pro drivers do like this pull back more thing. More ergonomic. Yeah, well, you're just able to like you have so much more power in your bicep. Yeah. You're like boom, boom, boom. But it does take a while because your your whole brain's like you. It's like this up, yeah. you know, just it takes, you have to retrain your brain. I think it's better, but I can do either one. But yeah, I do the pull back. But back in the day, I was all for the pull up, man. That Dukes of Hazard big wheel. I just get this in and don't. I mean, I could drive it like this if I had to get serious, but. I don't want it here, I want it here. You know, it's like this. Yeah. It's a lot less. Whoops. Where's the fucking like magic? Yeah, we'll rock with this for now. You can fill it once and wait to it. Also, a better steering wheel. 
Yeah, we got other ones. Yeah. Bigger ones. How much has that? Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Come back up with this. What's your? Okay. Did you do what you have to do? I'm sorry. Did you have to do? Yeah, I just open. There's two holes in the floor. I just open them up slightly and pass the the two lines through it. Okay. Got some grommets. Children, cover your eyes. One button. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Fill this boy up. We'll bleed it. Yeah, go crack the top bleeders on these calipers. Yeah. They come out quick. We got the uh, hydro e brake lines tied into each caliper, and then we mounted that little T on the floor there. Brought the lines up. Should be nice and nice little and clean. T back there, big T up front. There you oh. go. <laughs> I like that. This, uh, this is a GK Tech full kit, and it, whatever this car came with for a hydro brake, it all works beautifully. So we're yeah, good to does. go. It's got two little Willwood calipers back there. I want the even yeah, about fittings to for them. We're just gonna bleed it out and try it. Crack these Where's little cap here? baby bleeders. They already did something. Yeah, I see it's gone down a little bit. Need a wrench. I think it's a seven. I hear it. Both of them open. Both sides. What? You asking me to open both sides? No. Did you open any? I opened the top one on this side. I'm going to do the other one. I'm asking you if you want both sides open. At the same time? Yes. Sure. We can start that way. Oh, boy. Is it blasting out? That one did a little bit. Oh, boy. You may have to crack them both, inside and outside. Yeah. Depends on how it's mounted. That that side had a bunch of air. You gotta mount it vertical. What's up? That side had a bunch of air? That, yeah. The inside one. That looks better. Oh, we're getting somewhere. We're putting the 240 back on the ground for the first time basically ever with the whole new suspension set up on it. BC coilovers, Graham lights with new Falcon FK510s on it. I was worried it might be too high. Looks okay. Not that bad. I think we're probably definitely still on the lift. Yeah, I would say so. Thunk. No? Huh? Oh, wow. All right. All All right. Oh, no, I got this one stuck. This is the first time, right? Did you just stamp? Sure did. Go ahead, pull up on it. It might be stuck now. Oh. Oh, my God. I weigh 150 pounds. It's good. Oh. God. That is, like, out the box. Straight. Directly out of the box height. The alignment's not even that bad. We'll find out. All right, so this thing is going to move under its own power for the first time basically ever. This SR20 motor used to run my buddy's daily driver, and it hasn't done anything since 2006. We've got it fired up. We had it on the dyno, but it hasn't moved a car since then. So I'm excited. Uh, this chassis was like uh, somebody's drift project that never got finished. We have been thrashing on it on and off for a long time now, and we're finally going to take this thing down the road. I'm super stoked. Bard may have a design degree in here, but can't do work like this. What's up? Just laying on boxes. Laying on boxes. It's nice. The floor's dirty. Set the toe and start the show. 
All right. It is uh, winter in Pennsylvania. The one big thing we forgot is that there's no windshield in this thing and it's 30 some degrees outside. So we have made provisions to keep ourselves warm. Warmer. Warmer. Uh, we're gonna take this thing out for its maiden voyage. I'm not gonna like, you know, throw it down the street sideways Whoa. right off the bat. I wanna get it, just drive it under its own power, feel the brakes, feel the suspension, see if it drives, bed in the brakes, make sure it's a whole car. And I will be so thrilled, feel that power. I haven't driven a car like this in a million years. I haven't had one myself in forever. So let's rock. This 240 is going to go out on its maiden voyage right now. Ready? If it starts. If it starts this time. That's a clutch, boy. We got some clutch in there. Got some clutch in there. Tell my kids I love them. It's awesome. It drives pretty great. Yeah. It I think it's very good. solid. It pulls clean. It's smooth. It's not like crazy fast, but we're, you know, I'm on like a, just taking it up and down the lane, bedding the brakes in and stuff, so I'm not doing anything crazy, but it feels really solid. I'd like to see if we can rip it around here in the parking lot a little bit. More of a closed course, you know what I mean? See what it does. But I'm, I can't tell if the thermostat's open at all. <clears throat> but yo, we drove this thing. It was awesome. Mm hmm. It, it, it makes all the right sounds. It feels super tight. It feels like a tiny little nimble car. No power steering. Way too much front brakes. The brakes lock like crazy, but it's awesome. I'm stoked. It's a sweet little ride. What do you think? I'm going to do some burnouts and see if that thing opens. Yeah. Probably should What's do the that. worst that could happen? Probably should do That's it for this episode of Stay Tuned. My little 240SX Drift Dream is just about real. Uh, I drove this thing down the road a little bit. I managed to spin tires for a second. It's not flowing any coolant. We realized the thermostat stuck, so I backed out of it. Um, we'll deal with that next time, but I think it's about time to take this thing down to a proper place, a track, shake it down and see what it can do, because it's already becoming such a rad little car. I'm super stoked. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.